as a young man, I've always known I had a call to ministry and I was walking on that path. I was mentored by a renowned man of God. In my final year in the university, I was nominated and eventually became the president of our student fellowship. And God was really faithful to me. I had a notion that God would not come down to choose a partner for anybody. So, whosoever you see and your heart follows, go ahead and make him or her your partner. I was a very intelligent young man and I was blessed with physical beauty. I took after my handsome dad. On several occasions, young men and women would always compliment me. Some would even tell me to my face that they wished they were tall, dark and handsome as I was. My goal. My goal was to get a pretty lady that would compliment me. So I could have cute princes and princesses as my kids. Whenever I surveyed the sisters in our fellowship, I would conclude that none of them were qualified. I would whisper to myself, why is there no slay queen in this fellowship? Towards the end of my university education, I was not going to waste any more time. I was going fully into ministry and I needed a partner. As my mentor would always warn against a single man going into full-time pastoral ministry. I was preaching as a fellowship president on this particular Sunday. When a lady I had never seen in the fellowship before had walked into the gathering in high heels, she was fair and pretty. She was in a perfect gown that revealed her beautiful figure. Her heels made a stylish sound as she walked to a seat. So I thought, wow. This is her. This is the beauty queen that compliments me. We will make a great couple. What a beauty. I was so much engrossed and already fantasizing about our wedding that I lost control. I could not focus anymore. Without wasting much time, I brought the sermon to a close. I felt a little embarrassed, but I had the consolation and was not going to let her go. It was time to pray for the first timers. I fixed my eyes on this lady, but she did not join the first timers. I was a little disappointed. She left before the end of the prayer, and that only worsened how I felt. How careless was I to have allowed her to live just like that? Is she a student of this institution? Would I get to see her again? These questions kept running through my head as I approached my car. I got home after service and she was all I was thinking about. I could not sleep. I was only seeing a picture in my head. I could not understand what was going on anymore. I knelt down to pray, but I could not concentrate. I tried to study my Bible, but I just could not connect. I had a sleepless night. The following day, I was on my way to a lecture when I spotted her far off. Yes! Yes! 
What a divine arrangement to have met her again today. I ran excitedly to her. Within three months, I proposed to her. And that same year, we got married. That was the greatest mistake of my life. My marital problems started on the first night of our honeymoon. I knew from the start that Lola was not born again. I thought I would be able to win her to Christ. I saw several red lights from my lifestyle. Her indecent dressing, a nonchalant attitude to spiritual things. I, I, I remember my mentor asking me if I had prayed and received God's approval. I simply ignored this step because I thought that idea was a cake. I was, I was so carried away by her beauty and it became a thorn in my flesh. I want to urge the singles to wait on God and pray through before making choices, most especially maritally, so as not to fall into this same kind of mess. Do not be carried away by physical appearance and do not lean on your own understanding.